All right, welcome back, folks. Week six of FNF, our game of the week and our in-depth preview are all in the same game. That's right, Jamie Edmonds headed out to West Branch to check in with the Ogama Heights sophomore Whitney Crop, turning a negative into a positive this homecoming. Jamie joins us now live. Neil, that's right. Talk about making the best of her situation. As many of you know by now, Ogama Heights sophomore Whitney Crop was nominated to the homecoming court. As she says, as a joke, she was humiliated. She considered not going, but then her community rallied around her and she did show up tonight and she looked beautiful. She wore the red dress donated to her from the local dress shop. Her hair looked amazing. Another donation from a local hair salon. The 16 year old rode around the track with her partner and stood with the other nominated knees in front of her classmates and community. She didn't win the crown, but she told reporters afterward that this was well worth it because she hopefully inspired others. And judging by the other students from other schools who showed up in support, including the Cadillac football team that wore orange wristbands in her honor and students from Tawas who made the drive, Whitney did just that. I'm surprised that the team that we are going against is actually supporting me. It's Wow, that's overwhelming. I, seriously, I have no words for this right now. We just wanted to come here to support Whitney and show her that there's people out there that do care. So she's standing up for herself, and that's something that a lot of kids don't know how to do. And so that's 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 an admirable quality because, like, like you said, everyone is everyone's bullied, but she's she's doing something about it. All right, the homecoming dance is tomorrow night, where uh, no cameras will be allowed. Following that, Whitney says she hopes to just return to being a normal teenager and hopefully everything at school returns back to normal in a good way. Earl. All right, thanks a lot, Jamie. A lot of distractions out there at Ogemaw Heights, of course, but there's also football to be played. Cadillac came to West Branch to take on the Falcons. And of course, the big night, the homecoming night for the Falcons and Cadillac, like Jamie said, wearing those orange bands, you see him there, way to show support. Cadillac riding on the ground, and that's not really working for them, so you know what? They decide to hit the air. Jalen Brooks to Patrick Briggs. Look at that catch with the spin all the way to the end zone. Vikings go up 7-0 with the extra point. The Falcons turn now. Look at Brandon Banat. He's going to run. Cut. Yeah, whoop. Yeah, exactly. And look what he does. He finds space. He runs for about an hour. But then he finds the end zone all the way to the house. But hold the confetti, there's a flag on the play and it's all going to come back because of the penalty. So they're going to try it again. It worked the first time, only with the penalty, just uh, not as well as it did. He gets stopped just short. So then Ogemaw, they would eventually find the end zone. It's just Josh Allray up the gut and he finds pay dirt. Touchdown Ogemaw and they go on to get the upset 24-21. They hold off Cadillac's comeback, the upset, the first Big North win of the year for the Falcons. All right, how about over in Franken with the Eagles? Also perfect so far this season, doing the roller coaster from the North Branch kids. First quarter, Chris Liss to Ian Fisher on the quick strike, and that's some quick points. 8 0 Eagles with the two point conversion. Later in the first, List again, this time to Blaine Malakleb. Over the top, he's gone. 21-0, Eagles with the lead. Check him out, down the near sideline. That's nothing but daylight ahead of him on that one. More Muth in the first. Malakleb says, yep, I can get it done on the pass, and then I'm going to spin my way out and into the end zone to make it a big, big Muth win over North Branch. They're 6-0, 51-6 the final, and they are in the playoffs. All right, Goodrich at Lake Fenton tonight. Third quarter, second and short, Gage Smith to Nick Van Duser for the first down. He's rumbling. They would go on to score on the drive. 28-7, Lake Fenton. Lake third quarter. Goodrich trying to get moving. Mitch Rubio looking over the middle. Finds Chase Hall, though, who picks him off. Then the ensuing Devils drive. Smith, he's going to find Zach Zelensky, who goes outside, goes all the way to the end zone, finds the house. 34-7, Lake Fenton. That's your final. Lake Fenton, they're rolling, too. They're taking care of Goodrich. Wow. Rolling down there at Lake Fenton. How about Montrose, 4-1, and one, invading Mount Morris, looking to gain some ground in the GAC Red. Fourth down in the third. Montrose with the reverse. Malik Taylor, 20 yards into the end zone, and the Rams add the extra point to make it 27-8. Fourth quarter now, Montrose next possession. Riley Warren goes deep to Taylor. He makes a nice catch. 
along the sidelines. That is a first down for the Rams, and the chains are moving. Then Taylor, how about one more time? Give it to him, gets the toss, goes in for the Rams. Touchdown, 34-8. Montrose wins big, 41-8 the final. They are 5-1. and one.